All right, in this video, I want to do a comparison between this flash diffusion dome, which is called the ML CD15 by Godox. We're going to be running on the V1 today. I want to do a comparison. I've been trying to find whether it's a shoot through umbrella or the Mag Mod, Mag Sphere I've used. I've used the Mag Bounce before. I've used reflectors. I want to see how well this works. I had a subscriber. Uh, suggest this to me. So I've been testing it out on a few shoots and today we're going to be doing a comparison. I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Everything exactly the same. Using the same flash power, same flash, same room, same settings on the camera, everything. And seeing with and without this and what are the differences. Does this help us at all? Does this light the room better? Because if it doesn't, then what's the point of even using it? Does it cut our flash power down? I think you'll be surprised. I was surprised with the results. So let's get into Lightroom right now and check it out. All right, guys, so here we are in Lightroom, and I just wanted to show you a quick side-by-side -side comparison real quick to using just the Godox V1, just the bare flash, and that Godox uh, bulb, that diffusion bulb. This is what we're looking at. So what I've determined is actually the fall-off on the ceiling is a lot softer than it is with the bare flash. So you can see a hard line here, and it just really just blends in. And the other cool thing, and I didn't adjust the flash power at all. Yes, I did have to up the exposure a little bit by like two stops just to make sure that this side was brightened. I do that on every shot regardless. So both of these sh um, photos are edited the same way. And so if we could do this, and well, let me just show you real quick. Zooming in, you can see the shadow here behind this light bulb, the shadow around this love uh, for picture frame here. And notice with the bulb, it's actually harsher shadow. So it's not actually softer light as far as like reducing your shadows but considering that it does have a nicer spread let's just go ahead and reset um, this one and then I and we'll start that as five and I believe that I did it again which one is it it yeah this one will reset this one so if we do a side-by-side -side comparison yeah, this actually lightens up the room more, I think. You know, out, straight out of camera. I mean, we're getting more of a spread. We're getting, it's not softer light, per se, but that's okay. We could fix that later in post with our flash pop above the camera. So that's what I want to do. We are going to edit the image. I'm going to show you. This is our flash pop above the camera. I'm just going to copy these settings. And then we did... Let's see, what is this one? Yeah, this is the flash pop above the camera right here. So actually, I want to copy these settings. Star that is five. This is the left frame. And this is the right side, which I already have the settings. And then this is the far room there. I just went in there and popped a flash and I'm actually going to drop this one to zero so we don't get that confused. And let's bring all our five star images into Photoshop, which I believe this is the ambient layer. All right, so once all your layers are in Photoshop, make sure you have the top layer selected. We're going to click on the bottom one by holding down shift. So we select them all, come up here to edit auto align layers and then hit OK, just in case anything shifted. Now again, when you're watching this, you're thinking, man, this seems like a lot of steps. It seems like it's taking too long for your average flambient shot. Well, it actually doesn't. Just me explaining everything and having to go through all this process seems like it takes longer. But once you get the hang of this, I mean, it is whip, whip, whip. And again, you don't even have to do this many shots in every single room. Just rooms that you feel that you need it. Listen, it's probably better to have more than you need. A lot of times you will be able to just deal with the flash shot you know, above the camera and your ambient layer. Typically, that's, you know, a lot of your rooms, that's all you're going to need. It's the, it's the challenging rooms that I'm trying to teach you on how to master. Because remember, if you're not, um, if you're not being able to, if you're not being able to do the challenging rooms, then what's the point of even hiring you, as, you know, as far from a realtor standpoint to be able to do these challenging rooms? A lot of times the realtors will hire you because, you know, there's not enough natural light where they can't use their cell phone or it's just, you know, dark interiors. That's why I'm really trying to perfect, perfect that. But you always want to be um, just 
in again on site shooting this stuff it doesn't take much longer i just walked in the room and i just leave my flash power on half a power and again remember i showed you in lightroom these are two stops above so it's not like you have to have tons of flash power I mean, you're, better, you're actually safer going less flash power than more. You want to try to hit it as close to perfect as you can, but again, you don't have to. You can be two stops under and still pull those, pull that exposure up and be fine. So that's what I'm going to prove to you today. So this is with using that Godox Diffusion Dome thing. We're going to just uh, start with this one, highlight it, create a layer mask, command I to invert. I want to take my gradient tool, white is selected, and up here at the top, make sure opacity is 100 and we're just going to click and drag and delete ourselves out of there. Now what we can do is bring up that room that is off to the right and change that to lighten mode. That actually brightens up, actually it just turns on the light. Look at the difference in color, how gloomy and orange that looks, and then boom. Now we want to try to drop, you know, if it's a little bit too bright, bring that opacity down so it kind of blends in and matches with the other with the light in the other room. So now this is the flash pop above the camera. Let's turn that to lighten mode also. And we turn that on and off. That just kind of brightens up a little bit more of the foreground. I don't even care if it I'm just going to bring that down to 50% because it doesn't seem like it's doing a whole lot. And now we can kick on our ambient layer, which this is where we can soften and blend those shadows in from the uh, from the Godox flash dome. So let's turn this to luminosity and bring the opacity down. I like to do opacity at 50%. We didn't have any window views here, so look at how much different that look. If we zoom in here, yes, you are going to have shadows. Something like this is not going to be noticeable, but we go on and off. Look at the difference. That's without the uh, ambient layer, and that's with the ambient layer. It softened it up. And there we go. That is it. All we need to do now is flatten this image and bring it back into Lightroom. Command S to save it. And once it's saved, it's automatically brought back into Lightroom for us. And I'm just going to hit it with my interior final bump. Lately, I've been tweaking this preset that I made. I'm going to bring the contrast down almost to zero, but I want to hold down Option and then slide my black slider until I get some of that black really popping through that's showing what black is clipped and then let off and then I'm actually gonna bring the clarity down but instead of you doing clarity I come down here now to the sharpness and I'm actually gonna show you how to create a preset how about that so I just taken radius and detail up and then you can hold down option for your masking and whatever's black is not being sharpened whatever white is and you can just decide for yourself what parts of the image you want crisp and sharp on the edges and so watch this I'm just gonna come up here to preset this little plus sign create preset and then I'm gonna say interior interior final bump and then we're gonna call it two. everything is checked and then hit create and now it shows up right there so that's it all I have to do now is next time is just click on the interior final bump two, and it'll do this for me pretty snazzy all right so I want to show you one more example we're not gonna go run through the whole editing but I want to show you I think it was yeah this image right here so we had a lot of different we had tungsten lighting this chandelier actually had a like a 5,000 Kelvin lighting and then two that were a little warmer lights on in this one lights on in this one you would not be able to do this um, very easily with HDR I think it would just get muddy pretty quick now we don't have we have window views but this is what I did I did my ambient layer is this the ambient no this is a flash I believe because this actually that might have been the ambient this is the ambient layer and then we did a flash pop above the camera to tone down those lights we could have even hit that high bring those highlights down even more we did a flash pop over here and the only issue is with the shadow but I was able to delete that shadow in Photoshop and then we do our right and left composite in here. And I'll show you if I pay, oop, we got to paste our settings in like we've been doing. Look at how bright that is. Again, what are we at? Two stops over? Doesn't matter. Let's bring that down even more. Like say, like say right there is good. So we're one and a half stops underexposed on site, but it doesn't matter. Paste that in because remember, 
if it was overexposed and we were clipping highlights, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. And then this one is the far kitchen, I believe. And we could have brought those highlights down more. What's this one? This one is that room over there. And again, we could have brought those highlights down a little bit more. And that was it. And so we brought all those into Photoshop and we merged them in to that image. And notice that shadow up here. I uh, was able to delete it in Photoshop. Sometimes you know that happens. But look at the balance. Look at how clean that looks. So, all right. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. And give me a thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button, guys. Tutorials are coming out all the time. Thanks for watching.